observe the medial, lateral, and transverse arches. Note any congenital or developmental abnormality like pes plenus, pes cavus, hallux rigidus, hallux valgus, talipes equinovarus, club foot, hammer toes, and claw toes. Note the degree of pronation or supination of the midfoot and hindfoot. Check for helping sign and attempt to visualize or draw Phi's line to evaluate the medial arch and foot pronation. Again, note any angulation, thickening or swelling of the Achilles tendon. Check the plantar aspect of the feet for banyons, corns and dry skin. Remember, of course, to inspect the patient's shoes for uneven or abnormal wear and tear patterns. Then continue with palpation. In particular, identify the calcaneum, the navicular tuberosity, the plantar fascia, and check for spur formation. Feel the bulk of the intrinsic muscles and check for wasting or fasciculations. Then ask the patient to perform active movements. Ask them to do plantar flexion, dorsiflexion, inversion and eversion. Note the range of movement achieved, any crepitations or pain. Passive movements of the foot will only yield useful information if you are trained or specialized in the musculoskeletal or orthopedic disciplines. Details of these procedures may be found in the slideshow. In terms of active resisted movements of the foot, excluding those we covered earlier for the ankle, include flexion and extension of the toes. Note the muscle strength, joint stability, the presence of pain or crepitations, and compare with the opposite side. If you need to assess some common functional movements of the foot, you may wish to ask the patient to stand and then walk on tiptoes, then on their heels, and then to climb some steps with their heel off the step. <laughs>